So, hello, Life Church. <laughs> After three months, seeing not only the camera, seeing real life people. Dave, you, you, was, you was here every Sunday, right? Ozzy, hello, Ozzy. Hello, Ozzy. Wow. How was it? Not singing, just sitting there and try to sing? <laughs> Quite difficult, I can imagine. Wow. Let's give our team a big hand. They, uh, do, they're doing an awesome job, actually. Try to fix everything. Yeah, yeah thanks, 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 thanks. Hey, the, la the last three months, I remember uh, three months ago when there was the lockdown, and uh, Friday we, we had the news we were not able to do the live celebration. I'll tell you something. The first Sunday when we did the online celebration, people said, Pastor Lee, are you doing good? But you're not looking straight to the camera. You're always looking like this. Because there was the monitoring and I could see myself on the, on the screen. That's why I had to learn, look straight in the camera and say, hello world, here is Pastor Leo speaking. But now it doesn't work because you see it here, there, all over. And now we have to change our structure and the way how we preach again. This is amazing. I would love to start with a prayer because we're going into really for us as a church into a new season. We will still doing online celebration. We're not quitting that, but still we're doing live again. That means we have to change a lot of things. I want to start to pray that the next three months, God is helping us in a tremendous way. Father God, I'm so thankful. I'm so thrilled. I'm so privileged to know that you are here. You said when two or three people gather, you are in the midst. And I'm so thankful for your present. I'm so thankful for the way you are, for the Pentecost day that you poured out the Holy Spirit in a brand new, fresh way. And we believe that you speak to me this afternoon and I will be not the same anymore. When I walk out of this building, I will have an encounter with God Almighty. So, amen. So, The title of the message is Experience the Power of the Holy Spirit. And I really believe that the day of Pentecost was and is a game changer. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit changed the ordinary into the extraordinary. That means we have our human spirit, right? but there is also a Holy Spirit spirit. And this is not the same actually. The human spirit often is like this, I'm not enough. I'm not strong enough, I'm not gifted enough, I'm not blessed enough, oh my church is not big enough, my small group is not big enough, my family is not big enough, my church is not big enough, I don't have enough money, we don't have enough, we are somehow locked in a thinking of we are have not enough. This is the human spirit. But the Holy Spirit takes our ordinary and changed it into the extraordinary. That means we have a victorious spirit in us. We know that we have a healing power in us. We have a redeeming power in us. We know from the beginning that the Holy Spirit, when He is anointing us and He has enabled us and He has teaching us, we're going into the world and we are able to change the world for the glory of God. Yes. Hey, The Spirit of God changes the ordinary into something extraordinary because with the Spirit of God, all of a sudden things are possible. Why is the Holy Spirit like a fire? Because sometimes the Spirit of God has to burn down our small thinking. Why is the Holy Spirit like a wind? Sometimes He has to blow it away, our mindsets. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is like a dynamite. He has to explode our limitations away because with the Spirit of God, there is no limitations. I want to draw you an amazing picture how we can change the world with the Holy Spirit. And I love always like um, some illustration. It's like a wheel. I just tried to draw you. It's a wheel. It's very round. It's a wheel. Have you ever seen a wheel? A bicycle wheel. A bicycle wheel has also a center and also a spoke. So, 
So, this is a high-tech wheel. The wheel, it's God Almighty. The love of God is poured out to God the Father. And God the Father has given us the Holy Spirit, like the spoke. And you need some room, and the Holy Spirit always leads to Jesus, to the center. And if a wheel is able to move, and with God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus, we are moving. God is moving us to some villages, to some neighbors, to some family members to share the gospel and bring transformation into their houses. What happens on Pentecost was actually God took small, simple, a few people with the love of God, with the Holy Spirit, the center of Christ, God was moving the kingdom to all the places. Let's start with the setting that you understand the day of Pentecost. It was a gathering of people from around the world. They came different groups, different languages, different backgrounds. And every year they gathered 50 days after the Pesach, after the Lord's Supper, the Pesach. 50 days later and three things happened in that Shavuot festival. The first thing is, they were grateful for the grain, a sign for God's permission. And they were given the Torah, the word of God on Mount Sinai, and they were so grateful for that as well. The third thing, when they gathered, they believed in the provision of the Holy Spirit. Hey, have you ever known that, that the Holy Spirit was also in charge in the Old Testament? Because in the Old Testament, God has given the Holy Spirit to certain people, for a certain task and for a certain time. But the Bible says there will become a day where the Holy Spirit is poured out over every flesh, over every mankind. But they came together and said, hey, we know in the story of our people, without the Holy Spirit, our nation will be lost. And check this out in this clip. The Holy Spirit was always a very important part in the Old Testament. Das ist Bezalel. Nach einem überraschenden Besuch vom Heiligen Geist war er urplötzlich gesegnet mit Weisheit, Verstand und Können. Was er auch dringend gebraucht hat, denn Gott wollte unbedingt, dass er für ihn die Stiftshütte baut. Das ist Josua. Der Heilige Geist hat ihn dazu befähigt, ein ganzes Volk zu führen, was nach 40 Jahren Wüste nicht ganz einfach war. Das ist Gideon. Der Heilige Geist gab ihm die Kraft, eine Armee zu führen, obwohl er dazu eigentlich gar keinen Bock hatte. Das ist Simson. Der Heilige Geist gab ihm die Kraft, mit bloßen Händen einen Löwen zu zerreißen. Versuch bitte nicht, das zu Hause nachzumachen. Das ist Saul. Er war eigentlich nur auf der Suche nach entlaufenen Eseln, als ihn der Heilige Geist erst in einen Propheten und dann in einen König verwandelt hat. Das ist Maria. Der Heilige Geist hat sie ganz schön in Schwierigkeiten gebracht. Versuch du mal deinen Verlobten klarzumachen, dass er Vater wird, ohne dass er dafür etwas kann. Aber es ist gut rausgekommen, wie du sicherlich weißt. So bin ich, der Heilige Geist. Hey, come on. Hey, we have to understand the setting of the Pentecost Shavuot day when the people gathered every year from different nations, different tribes and different languages. They celebrate three things every year. We believe God it provides us and that we really believe and we are thankful for the law, for the Ten Commandments. When I say, hey, let's celebrate the Ten Commandments in our nation, people say, really? But it's law. But they were celebrating the, the laws of God. And the third thing is that we are glad that the Holy Spirit is and was always a part in the Old Testament. And what actually happened uh, in the day of Shavuot, in the Pentecostal day, was like a parallel story. A parallel story. What happens in the Pentecost days happened thousands of years before at the Mount Sinai. God gave the same instructions And years later, on the Pentecost days, the same thing happens again. Instead of killing something, it something came to a life. Check out the Old and the New Testament, the parallelism in the story. In the Old Testament, Mount Sinai, earthquake, fire, and whirlwind. 
Pentecost, earthquake, fire and whirlwind. Law written onto tables. Law written into the heart. Fear of God. Friendship with God. Covenant with God's people. Covenant with the church. Three thousand die. Three thousand come alive. Check out the last number. Three thousand people died at the Mount Sinai. They were waiting for the law. Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and three thousand people died because they were disobedient. But in the New Testament, the people of God they were waiting, and one day. 3,000 people received Jesus Christ and are born again. This is always a story in the story. God can turn from death into life. And this is the, the, the mindset of what God is able to do. Let's give God for that a big shot of applause. Come on. 3,000 people get alive. Three things, three things happened in the Pentecost day. We often speak only about the Holy Spirit. I mean only. Holy Spirit is powerful. But we often forget the combination about God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus are in the combination of moving something further. Here is like the wheel. It's like God in different nations and different tribes and different cultures and different languages. They came together, but they love God Almighty. But God put out the Holy Spirit like a spoke in his room. The Spirit of God always leads to the center of Jesus Christ. When these things are together, the church is moving to places where the gospel is needed. Healing, transformation, and God changed the ordinary into the extraordinary. Let's start with the point number one. What God does, he brings the identity. Identity starts wherever you are, wherever you're born, whatever is your mindset maybe, there is an identity of God Almighty. You cannot change the world until you embrace your own identity. If you're lacking of your self-worth, your self-identity, you will never be strong and able to share the gospel to the world, to people in need. And Jean, she will explain us what the identity with God Almighty meant to her. So, Jane. I want to tell you about a short moment where I was walking with my friends and we walked past this hair salon and I felt like the Lord was telling me to go in there and ask if there was a pink haired lady working there and that I should tell her about Jesus. And right away fear of men overcame me and I was so worried what these people were going to think of me. And so I kept walking past the hair salon trying to bring up the courage to go in there. And when I finally did, I walked up to the lady and I said, is there a pink haired lady working here? I know this is a weird question, but I'm just asking. And she said, there actually is. Like, do you want an appointment? And I said, no, I just want to talk to her. And she said, okay, um, she's with a client now. Please come back in 15 minutes. And so I walked outside and I thought, Jesus, I just... It took me so much courage to go in there. Now you're making me wait for another 15 minutes. But in that moment, I realized something. I realized that if I would have been walking in my God-given identity, I would have, without hesitating, walked in there doing what God told me to do. And in Romans 5.5, 5, it says that God's love has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. So the love that we need and that the world so desperately needs, it's in our hearts. And what we need to do is start walking in it. And I believe if we do that, if we walk in this love and in this identity, that we can see the miracles and that God can use us um, and we get to just be a part of the, the miracles. And I don't want to stand in God's way when he wants to work through me. And I don't want to miss out on the life that he has prepared for me. And to finish the story, after the 15 minutes, I went in there 
Um, and we, I talked to the lady and I got to encourage her and I got to tell her about Jesus. And you know, she didn't give her life to Jesus in that moment right away, but I am so grateful that God is on this journey with me, that He's walking with me and that He keeps reminding me that this love is poured out into my heart and that I have this identity in Him and that nothing can change that. And so I truly believe that for the, for the um, life that God has chosen us and for the life that He has designed for us, we need to know who we are and we need to walk in the love that He has poured out into our hearts. Come on. Thank you so much. Wow. This, the identity in God is like the wheel. This is very important because this is the foundation. Without the wheel, a bicycle is not able to move. And it doesn't matter where you're born, what is your language, what is your background. God's love is poured out to the Holy Spirit. That's the point number one. If you not feel loved, welcomed, empowered, equipped, nurtured by God Almighty, then you hear the Holy Spirit, but you're always in position, oh, I'm not sure, is this really God or is this me? Is this 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 God or is this me? There's a new rap. Send it to Justin Bieber. Is this God or is this me? Is it God or me? You know, we are feeling not comfortable. And you have to understand what happens in the day of Pentecost The love of God was poured out as well into the hearts of the disciples because before they were so, they were afraid of anything. All of a sudden became fearless because the love of God was poured out in their hearts. The point number two, what happens on the Pentecost, the spoke, it's the Holy Spirit. When you check out the bicycle wheel, as you can see, there is some space between Some space between, some space between, some space between, some space between. Why I mention space and space and space and space? There's a nugget I want to share with you guys. If you want to hear the Holy Spirit clearly, if you want to be equipped to the Holy Spirit, you have to create space in your agenda. Why am I saying that? Because we are overspammed. I think one of the strategies of the devil is keep us busy. Because if you're keeping busy, we don't have a space, we don't have a room that gives us the, the position to hear the Holy Spirit. I'll give you some numbers about your smartphone. Did you know how many times a day you touch a touch screen of a screen? Have you ever thought about it? 2,600 times a day, the average touches a touch screen of a smartphone. Just think for a moment, we have only 1,440 minutes a day. That means in one minute, the average touches twice a display of a smartphone. That means in one week, It's four, in one day, it's four hours. In one week, we touch 40 hours a touch screen. If you don't believe that, then watch the statics of your smartphone. With other words, we are overspammed of so many news. And if you're not giving space and room to the Holy Spirit, we will not be successful doing what's on the heart of God. Because we need space, we have to create space. Hey, it's a very funny thing. In the beginning of year 2020, I asked the Holy Spirit, what, what, what is, what is, what's on your heart for this year? And I heard so clearly in my, in my prayer time, skip the computer by your side. Take a book and before you start to prepare a message, don't use the computer. Take the book Go to a special place, lay down and say, Holy Spirit, next Sunday is the topic, what's on your heart? And I always invite the Holy Spirit through all my years. Don't, don't, don't mis misunderstand me wrong. I always invited the Holy Spirit. But I said, no, then this year do it differently. And I took my book, I lay down on a place and say, here is an empty page. What's on your heart? And I take my pen, I start writing down all the things, impression that the Holy Spirit is giving me. And one word God gave me. He said to me, be flexible for the year 2020. 
It was January. <laughs> Be flexible. That's why Corona, I'm not, I'm not shocked because I was ready. I'm not only born ready, I was even for that season ready. He said, be flexible. And I had no clue in the beginning of January what does it mean. I thought maybe my mom is dying or I don't know. You know, my mom is not in good shape. I just had my thoughts. Be flexible. When the coronavirus came, I realized, ah, oh, that's not a big deal for the Holy Spirit. I'll show you some pictures. When you drive to Germany or Austria, Italy, the, the, the borders were locked. You could not pass the border of Italy and Germany. They were locked. All the planes uh, are on the ground. I can see from my apartment all the planes in Dübendorf. They're standing there, waiting there. I don't know for what, but they're there. All the shopping malls have been closed. From my apartment, I can see the, the Glad Centrum, biggest shopping mall in planet Switzerland. All, everything was locked down. And I want to ask you a question. Is this a problem for God? Is this a problem for the Holy Spirit? Is this a problem for ICF? Because often people say, oh, you're only a big church because people coming in ice building and the super gold worship band. I say, no, church is never building. Church is never a structure. It's always the Holy Spirit. Even though when you're not able to meet, the church goes on. Be flexible. That meant when the coronavirus came, we changed immediately in one of the largest online churches in Europe. And thousands and 10,000 people we were able to win and reach for Jesus Christ. Be flexible. Give room. Give room. If you spend 40 hours a day on your smartphone, how many hours a week you spend With the Holy Spirit, it's just a question. If you want to see signs and miracles, transformation, then spend, give room in your agenda for the Holy Spirit where you lay down and say, Holy Spirit, I don't have any agenda. It's a white piece of paper. Just speak to me. What's on the heart and will of God? Because in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, whatever you turn to the right or to the left, Your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Hey, there is a voice behind your ears is whispering, be flexible this year. Just give 1,000 US dollars. No dice offering, it hurts. Have you ever heard numbers? What you should give? I hear numbers all the time. I say, Agado, oh why you mean with 1,000? You want to give me 1,000? You are in the blessing zone to give 1,000 Swiss francs more. Is this God? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Just do it. If you give room to the Holy Spirit, things are changing. Here are two stories. We became a church without walls. Here are two stories what the Holy Spirit has invented in that coronavirus in our church and through our community. Hey church, the corona crisis, it really pushed us um, to make sure that people can also experience God and church online. And uh, we can really see how suddenly people are being reached that until now they have not been reached. Uh, just in the last seven days through our YouTube channel, ICF Zurich, the videos got played over 42,000 times. Uh, just in the last seven days, every week, praise reports coming in, prayer requests coming in. We can connect people with small groups. And that's cool because eventually we want to connect people uh, to, to, with each other. And we want to connect people with God. And we want to, even though we're going to in the future meet again in person, we want to 
keep that up that option to experience God and experience church also online because there are people that can't come in person and there might maybe somewhere living somewhere off far away but they feel connected with ICF Zurich and through church online they can still be a part of ICF Zurich and that's that's really like a great um, a privilege at times we are in. We as ICF Singen, Filling and Schwenning in Freiburg use the Corona time as a chance to plant churches. We have interest groups and startups in Offenburg, Friedrichshafen and Tuttlingen. And we took them all together since we're now a church without walls when we meet digitally. And so we teach them central and then we build them locally. And we use this idea to start the church planting webinar as a tool of the ICF movement in Germany and also Austria to take all the different church plans and, and interest groups to build new ICF churches. We have different ICF pastors as a task force. And so we take people together centrally, teach them, break them down in, in breakout sessions in, in separate groups where we teach them, where we connect them and with our heart to build churches. And it's amazing to see that. We also started an online small group uh, leader course and alone in Friedrichshafen, 20 people joined in the small group leadership course and it's crazy how Corona became a chance. Yeah, to encourage people, uh, stories of people in our community from Dan and David Rominger. And this is such encourage how people gave space to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit take their agenda. And I want to talk about the, the, the last point, about the center of it all, about the last picture in this wheel. It's Jesus. It's the stumbling block, how Romans 9, 33 says, it's, it's the one who brings everything to drive. It's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It's the fulfillment of the prophets and of the law. This is Jesus. And this Jesus told the, the disciples in Acts 1, 8, but you will receive the power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me where, where, uh, everywhere, in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. In Jerusalem, Jerusalem stands for the, the place there were. In Judea stands for for. For the children of God, Samaria stands for the Gentiles and the ends of the world, wherever God is calling us to do. And in the next moment, I, I want to lean in about something that Jesus said in the beginning before he called his, his disciples. He said the same thing in, in, in this moment when he called the disciples as then before he went to heaven. He said one thing, he said, follow me. So it's important that Jesus, it's, it's interesting that Jesus says this in the beginning, follow me, that's, that's, that's normal, follow my steps, watch me. But why did Jesus said follow me in the moment because, be, 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 before he goes to heaven? Why follow me in this moment? I think the interesting moment is that we, we, we need to, to, to know the context of, of the Jewish. And the context is to follow someone, is to lay down your life, Whatever you're a, a tax collector, whatever you're a fisherman, whatever you're a, a prostitute, a gangster, a sinner, it, it is to lay down your life, to watch at this rabbi and watch how he live, how he teach, how he love, how he act. And this is my new normal. This is my new life. And when Jesus said, follow me, he told to his disciples, the old has gone and the new has come. Something new will come and you will lean in, in this new. And he, 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 did, he didn't say, okay, I, I will go to heaven and now you, you can follow Peter. This is a economy class. <laughs> This is not Jesus. Jesus saw the potential in you and in me. He saw the potential and he said, watch my steps, watch how I used to, to live with this Holy Spirit, to live with God. And sometimes I'll, I'm so sad about Christian who said, I, I, I can't live this life. This, this is too much. This is way too, too big. This is only Jesus that can do this. And you know what? This Jesus 
gave us his spirit, number one. And number two, he sees the potential in you and in me. He's, he's saying, you will do bigger, bigger things than I have done. You will stand on snakes and scorpions. Signs and wonders will follow them who believe. So what, what means this for you and for, for me, for us as a church? Hey, come on church, we can live the life that Jesus lived. We can follow his steps. We can follow this lifestyle. As Jane said it before, Wow, I can live in the identity of God. I want to grow more into this day by day. This is potential. As Leo said, I want to make room for the Holy Spirit. And as Jesus said, follow me, follow my steps. Look at me, look at me every day. Where are you going? Look at me. And this will drive you for the gospel. This will give you drive. This will give the whole wheel drive that we can go for His name to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria and all over the world. My question for you today is how far will you follow this rabbi? Is it just to Jerusalem <laughs> or is it to Judea? Is it to Samaria or is it to the end of the world? And you know what? Every revival starts there where people say, Holy Spirit, here I am. Do whatever you can do. Take me to the place you want me to have. And we want to do this right now in the next song that Cara will sing. She wrote this song in the times in Corona and the song called Holy Spirit Fill Us. And let's do this one question. Let, let us ask God, I, I, I want to drive, I want to drive, but where? Would you want me to be? Where would you want me to be? Yes, exactly. That's what we want to do now. We just want to give the Holy Spirit room. We want Him to have all of our hearts right now. And one evening in Corona time, I was at home and I was so frustrated. I was asking God, why can't we be together as a church? Why can't we meet physically? Why isn't this possible? And I felt the Holy Spirit telling me, it's actually good that you're feeling this way because the church is meant to be together. The church has so much power if you come together and call upon my name. And that's what we want to do now. And if you want to give the Holy Spirit room, if you want to call upon him, then you can come down on your knees with me. And I'm gonna sing this song, just asking the Holy Spirit to fall on us as the bride we're standing before him and we're giving him room.
Heiliger Geist, bitte führe und leite du uns. Und danke für das Abendessen. Amen. Amen. Er hat gesprochen. Wer? Der Heilige Geist. Für das haben wir doch gerade gebetet. Stimmt. Was hat er denn gesagt? Wir sollen Barnabas und Paulus auf große Missionsfahrt schicken. Und wieso können die jetzt auf eine Missionsreise gehen und nicht wir? Frag ihn. Wen? Den Heiligen Geist. Aha. Ich will aber endlich auch mal auf eine Missionsreise gehen. So, wahrscheinlich ist es noch nicht an der Zeit für dich. <lacht> und wo schicken wir sie dann hin? Der Heilige Geist wird sie führen. Und wie? Hat er da Pfeile auf dem Boden oder was? Nein, wohl eher durch die Schrift. Brüder, seid ihr fertig? Wir können die Zeit besser nutzen. Lasst uns beten. Für Barnabas und Paulus. Ja, und die wichtige Reise. Stimmt. Du hast recht. Guter Vater, wir fasten heute ganz bewusst für unsere Brüder Barnabas. Danke, dass du sie ausgewählt hast, dir außerhalb von Israel zu dienen. Bitte beschütze du sie. Und schenk du ihnen Vollmacht, dass wenn sie predigen, dass deine Gemeinde wächst. Heiliger Geist, führe sie an die richtigen Orte, dort wo die Menschen offen sind für die Botschaft von Jesus. Denn dein Nein, ist das Reich, Reich und die Kraft und die, die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. You will be my witnesses in all Judea and Samaria. And you will be my witnesses from one end of the earth to the other. Wow, today is Pentecost and we were celebrating already the whole day that the Holy Spirit is on us and we are anointed. Now this is a very powerful word as we heard also in the message, to be anointed, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But it's actually a prophecy that came already from Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied over Jesus and over every follower of Jesus And he said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. 
because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. And today I would like to anoint you all guys. I hope you are ready to receive. If you are at home, I want to challenge you, go to the kitchen now and get a little drop of oil. I also have a little bit of oil here. You can make this as a sign and put it on your head. Everybody in here, you have just to take your hand yourself and I want to bless you, I want to anoint you because this is a very um, specific anointing that is for, stands for Jesus and for everybody who is anointed with the Spirit of God. So if you know that you have the Spirit of God on your, uh, in you, I want you to ask to lay your hand on your heart and I will bless you with an anointing. And then tomorrow we'll sing blessings over you. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on you. Because the Lord has anointed you. He has anointed you to proclaim goodness to the poor. So wherever you see poorness around you, spiritual, inner or outer poorness, God has called you to bring the good news.